Uh, it's a great pleasure to introduce uh, Professor Christos uh, Papadimitriou. He's a professor of uh, computer science at Columbia University. He's uh, uh, particularly well known for his contributions to the theory of computer science. He's a true Renaissance man who has contributed to uh, a wide diverse areas, uh, applying his uh, knowledge from computer science to uh, game theory, to biology, to, to evolution, to the internet. And, uh, and, and now he's going to tell us about uh, perhaps a more uh, recent passion of his, uh, uh, the intersections between computer science and artificial intelligence, and, uh, and which in the brain arguably one of the most difficult challenges for us in terms of understanding uh, brain function. So thank you very much for joining us, and uh, please go ahead. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks for the kind introduction. I'm, I'm delighted to be here with you. Uh, I wish we were all uh, 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 together, but uh, this has to do for now, and, and uh, we'll resume next year. Uh, 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 so uh, uh, I'm going to tell you about language, which um, uh, uh, as you know, is what is happening right now. And if you think about it, uh, what is happening right now is nothing short of miraculous. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm, I'm creating uh, air waves in my space. And uh, uh, these air waves get in your space through a miracle that we're not going to talk about. Uh, and once they get into your space, your, uh, your, uh, your tympanum uh, decodes them and, and, and your auditory cortex into words, okay? And then the really amazing part has starts, okay? That uh, uh, at your left brain uh, takes these words and puts them together and makes them into sentences and then looks at them as a whole and understands them uh, and uh, remembers them. And if I'm lucky at all, uh, uh, some of you will remember them for the rest of your life, okay? So that's, that's, uh, 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 this is incredible, okay? We are all, we are all studying the brain. And uh, as students of the brain, we know that the brain does amazing things, okay? I'm proposing to you that nothing is as amazing as this, okay? Uh, so, uh, how is this done? Okay, that's... Uh, and we know it happens here in the left brain, in the left, left hemisphere. Uh, and in fact, we know these are the four areas uh, where, uh, that are most uh, certainly implicated in, the, in language. Uh, the purple one on the lower right is, is, is the medial temporal lobe, where the lexicon is, is stored. Then the green one is the, is the superior temporal gyrus, where, uh, uh, where uh, 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 words are used in the context of, uh, of, of syntax, of, of, of creating a sentence. And the other two areas are Broca's area, uh, where syntax happens, where, the stra where these, apparently these words are structured into trees, okay? Uh, so, uh, at least that's what linguists have been saying, telling us, okay? But uh, let's see. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, this is a book that opened my eyes as to what is known uh, about language and it's incredible how much uh, you know how the, the the knowledge about how language happens in the brain is multiplying the last uh, few years uh, so uh, i told you about the lexicon Wernicke's area in the superior temporal gyrus and Broca's area uh, this these we have had known for 150 years okay S uh, since Wernicke and Broca uh, but now uh, some amazing experiments are happening okay let's let's let me tell you one of them uh, franklin and green uh, uh, the basically, they discovered through fMRI that different areas of Wernicke's area, uh, different sub-areas of, of the superior temporal gyrus responded to track in these two sentences. The ball hit the track or the track hit the ball. This means that within Wernicke's area, there are different sub-regions, sub-areas, that uh, were the role of, uh, of the word as a subject or an object is decided. And I mean, if you want something which is really cool, the first area also responded to the track was hit by the ball. In other words, it's not the subject, the superficial subject and object, but it's the deep subject and object. In other words, uh, the brain says, track is the object of this ball, never mind of this uh, sentence, uh, never mind the stupid uh, passive voice maneuver, okay? So, 
this is amazing, okay? So you know that, that, that something like that is happening. But watch this. Here is another experiment, another recent experiment. They just, uh, uh, at four hertz, which is the, the, the frequency with which I'm, I'm speaking to you now, they, uh, they gave hundreds of subjects uh, uh, single syllable words in six different languages. And uh, uh, then they took the data and they took the Fourier transform and guess what? They found a peak at four hertz, which is completely understandable because uh, every four, every four, uh, uh, four times every second, uh, the subject must uh, fetch a word from, uh, from the lexicon. Then they did something really clever. They repeated the same experiment, except that every four uh, words made sense. Okay? They were, they were, they were a, a sentence. And now, here's what happened. There were three peaks. There was the same one at four, because of course they have to do the same thing, but there was at one hertz a peak. What is this? This means that once every second, the subject had to do something special. What is this special thing? I think it's creating a sentence. And twice every second, the subject had to create a phrase. That's the two hertz, okay? So to my mind, this is what had been happening, okay? So you know that, that we have been, Building, we are building trees in our brain, okay? That's, in other words, we create the data structures that uh, convince us that this, uh, this uh, what we heard makes sense. And, and basically we extract the meaning. And of course we memorize, uh, reuse and so on, okay? So that's, that's uh, 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 you know, uh, a few years ago, I had lunch with Chris Manning. Okay, so you know, and uh, and uh, I don't know what came to me, but in the middle of the of the of the lunch, I I, I I left my fork down, and I looked in the eye, and I looked him in the eye, and I I told him uh, something like, "For the love of God, Chris, do we have trees in our brain?" And uh, Chris Manning, which uh, is among the I know, is is the one is among the least likely to answer yes. He told me resoundingly, yes, we have trees in our brain. Okay, so, you know, this completely changed my attitude. Okay, so, you know, we really have to understand how these trees are made. Okay, and then I found out about this experiment. So, the question is, how are these trees created? And they must be created by neurons in about a dozen spikes uh, per step. Why dozen? Because dozen is an interesting number. It is the ratio of the two natural rhythms. Okay, gamma is the rhythm of spiking neurons, and theta is uh, the, the rhythm of language as well as all, all uh, interactions of, of the animal with the world. Okay, so that's, that's uh, uh, another experiment. Uh, the completion of phrases and especially of sentences activates parts of Broca's area. So the creation of the inner nodes of this tree, the tree you know, is, has, a, has a neural basis. Something is happening in Broca's area. Okay, and a different part of Broca's area for sentences and a deeper, deeper, deep, deeper part for, for phrases, okay? So these are all the recent experiments. So you know, they completely opened my eyes, okay? So basically now we know much, much more. We know that things are happening and know where they're happening because we find this out by, by, by fMRI. But in some sense, this is a static architecture, okay? The dynamics, the dynamic architecture of how this is happening are still a mystery, okay? What we, what, what we seem to be understanding now is that there are populations of neurons that are created on the fly to encode syntactic elements, words, phrases, sentences, and to communicate with each other because the sentence has to communicate with its words and so on, okay? And, uh, and the question is, how is this done, okay? In, in, in her recent book, Friderici conjectures that there are language mirror cells, like the mirror cells we have in our, in our, in our frontal lobe for, 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 uh, for, for, uh, 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 for uh, mirroring uh, motion, uh, motion by other animals. Uh, so, um, uh, okay, uh, let's, let's take a, uh, a much broader view now, okay? Language, as I told you, is, I believe it's one of the most challenging things uh, that the brain does to decode, okay? But, uh, but the truth, okay, the, the situation in the whole field, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is uh, extremely interesting. In some sense, uh, every year we double our knowledge, okay? Every five years, the, the Kandel uh, and Schwartz book is reprinted and it's 400 pages uh, thicker, okay? And, uh, and uh, yet, uh, 
we don't seem to be progressing in understanding. The more we know, the less we understand, okay? And here is how Richard Axel uh, uh, put this. We do not have a logic for the transformation of neural activity into thought, okay? So when I, when I read this a couple of years ago, a year and a half ago, I, I almost fell off of my chair because, because I mean, I was feeling like uh, the Pope was, was blessing me, okay? You know, because this is exactly what I thought that is worth working on, okay? And he said, he continued to say, I view discerning this logic as the most important future direction in neuroscience. And of course, uh, neural activity in the thought is exactly what we need in order to understand language, okay? So that's, that's, that's why, uh, so the question is, what kind of formal theory would be would qualify, okay? And and uh, and uh, 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 I have uh, I have uh, I have the uh, I have a modest uh, proposal, okay? Uh, let's uh, let's uh, you know we are computational neuroscientists. We believe that computation is taking place in the brain. Sometimes uh, 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 psychiatrists will ask me, why, professor, do you think that there is computation taking place in the brain? And I mean, you know, the only reasonable answer I can give is that if I assume that, then I can think it's easier for me to think about the brain, okay? So, uh, so let's, let's assume, let's make this assumption that there is computation, but the question is what level? Of course molecules compute, of course spiking neurons and synapses compute, and many people will reasonably tell you, and they're right, that dendrites, that the real computation happens in dendrites. And of course, I mean, as you saw in, 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 in Josh uh, Tenenbaum's uh, lecture uh, uh, earlier, uh, there are, the whole brain does compute. I mean, you know, because, because cognitive scientists, they say, you see, the experiments shows that uh, these people uh, uh, act as if their brain was executed the following program, okay? So, so these are all places where computation happens, but there seems to be something in the middle that is missing, okay? And this level, this level of computation in the brain is what is needed in order to fathom language, to understand language better than we are understanding right now, okay? So, here is, you know, I have, a, I have a, an idea. I have a, I have an, a possible answer. Uh, uh, let's call it an assembly hypothesis. It's, it's, uh, it's uh, something that we, we, uh, we came up with, with, with a bunch of, uh, of, 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 of collaborators. Uh, and that there is an intermediate between these levels, okay, where the question mark was sitting. Uh, uh, level of brain computation. It's implicated in, higher on the, uh, high, in carrying out higher order co cognitive functions, such as reasoning, planning, language, storytelling, art, math, music, and the, good, the good stuff. And assemblies of neurons are its basic uh, representation, its main data structure. Assemblies of, so what is, it, what is assemblies of neurons? They are uh, large populations of neurons uh, that are densely interconnected, they are very stable, and uh, they all reside in the same brain area, you know, so every, all, all these neurons are in the, from the same area. And the firing of this assembly in some pattern is tantamount to the subjects thinking of this particular memory, concept, object, word, episode, etc. Okay, so, so this is not news, okay? The, uh, Hebb had already uh, uh, conjectured this 71 years ago. Uh, they had been sought by a lot of people heroically for uh, uh, 60 years, until for more than half a century, until they were discovered, okay? So you no know, technology was, was reached a point where, 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 where they caught animals uh, creating and, and manipulating assemblies. Uh, and uh, nowadays, sort of, you know, it's, it's beyond doubt that they do play an, an incredible role in the way animal brains uh, interact. Uh, I believe, that uh, they play a especially big, huge role in humans. Here is why. Because I believe that the place where assemblies uh, uh, do their work is what is known as the association cortex. What is association cortex? It's everything except for the motor cortex and the, and the, and the, and the, and the sensory cortex. Uh, uh, the association cortex in rats is tiny, okay? Maybe 20, 30% of our brain. For us, it's 85% or something of our brain, okay? So, so, uh, uh, it is, it is, uh, it is, uh, it, you know, I believe that, uh, that, uh, that uh, assemblies are a good part of the story of what, of what, of how the association cortex works, and especially language, which is my, my, the topic of this talk. Uh, Busaki, for example, uh, uh, well, you know, neuroscientist who actually, his group discovered assemblies uh, beyond doubt. 
calls them now the alphabet of the brain, okay? So, you know, uh, the, the older ones uh, among us remember uh, this, uh, this uh, pseudo dilemma, okay? So, you know, uh, is, uh, is intelligence, uh, uh, is intelligence uh, uh, symbolic or sub-symbolic, okay? So, uh, uh, Buzaki says, uh, the assembly is where the uh, where the boundary is. Okay, so you know that, that that's where sub-symbolic uh, uh, becomes symbolic. Okay, so uh, all right. How are assemblies created? It turns out that it had been known for at least twenty-five years that this very simple circuit. Okay, there is a synaptic input to a neural mass of of excitatory neurons. Uh, this and this excitatory neurosis is, is in an excitatory inhibitory loop with another neural mass. And if this happens, a stable assembly will form over there. Okay, so this is this is really what 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 uh, the, the the basics. Uh, but uh, the way in my group, in sort of you know, in, in, in the way it is explained in the paper that, that I posted for this talk. Uh, we have a mathematical way to say it, which I believe is a useful way to, of looking at, at the association cortex. Uh, in other words, you assume a finite number of brain regions, each one of, of them contains the same number, let's say, of excitatory neurons. And inhibition means that among, you know, we, we only implicitly mod mod model inhibition. Uh, the effect of inhibition is that in every area, only K of the uh, all N excitatory neurons fire. And, uh, some pairs of, of areas are sparse, uh, have sparse random connectivity between them. These are the red arrows. All of them have recurrent random connectivity uh, with some connection probability. The neurons fire in discrete steps. Okay, so you know, that's, uh, that's, a, that's a, uh, an assumption that is as convenient as it is indefensible. Uh, and uh, at each step, uh, the, as I said, K, K of, of the, you know, I think of K as square root of N for, 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 uh, for to fix ideas. And uh, areas can be explicitly inhibited and disinhibited. And then you add over that Hebian plasticity, which means that if there is a connection, a, a synaptic connection from neuron I to neuron J, and I fires, and in the next step J fires, the weight of IJ is multiplied by some uh, constant uh, la larger than one, let's say 1.1. Okay, so this is our whole model. And within this model, we can prove that, uh, that uh, through both theorems and simulations that, uh, that assemblies do happen and work uh, their miracles. Okay, so, uh, and the typical values of the, of the parameters as, as, uh, that, that we use in, 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 in our work and paper are, are these. Okay, so uh, one thing that, uh, that, that uh, uh, is sort of the basis of this, is something that had been known for at least 60 years, uh, a powerful computational primitive, which is you have a random projection from one uh, neural population to, a, to another larger area, okay? And uh, out of this, you, uh, uh, you cut off, you select the K, you know, the, 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 the neurons that, that have the largest synaptic input, okay? Uh, and, uh, and this uh, is, uh, it turns out to be a very interesting primitive. Uh, it turns out that uh, uh, it uh, can improve several aspects of deep nets if you use it, if you use it instead of, instead of uh, uh, ReLU uh, and so on, okay? But uh, I believe that it is an interesting, uh, an interesting uh, 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 primitive for the study of uh, the way the brain works. Okay, good. Uh, so assembly projection is the following. You have this set of spiking neurons that project to a different area. So once, the, once these neurons spike once, through uh, uh, random projection and cut, uh, uh, and cap, uh, a new something, you know, a, a, new, a, new, a new population will, be, will fire in the adjacent area, in the downstream area. Now, once both of these fire again, the situation becomes more complicated because now the neurons in the area on the right, uh, they uh, receive inputs both from the original input and from the, from the blue uh, population. And as a result, uh, a new population will, 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 uh, will emerge. Uh, if, if this is repeated, a new population will emerge and so on. And, uh, what do, and of course, we also have heavy plasticity, as I mentioned, 
And uh, 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 the theorem says that this process converges exponentially fast, okay? And in our experiments, it converges in about a dozen steps and creates a new, uh, a new stable assembly. Uh, uh, so stable in the following sense that you have pattern completion, that through a future presentation of the same or similar synaptic uh, input activates the, the new assembly, the same assembly, uh, and so does firing of a small subset of the new assembly. In other words, if, if it so happens that a small subset of the, of, the of the neurons of this assembly fire, then the whole assembly with high probability completes. Uh, this is the result of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, uh, of densely inter interconnectivity uh, and uh, the ensuing stability. Good. Uh, uh, there is another fun um, uh, operation uh, imagine that there were two other assemblies, the ones on the left, which have created uh, the, these two assemblies in the same area uh, on the right. Uh, and now, if these assemblies uh, fire together, in other words, they co-occur, uh, if there is evidence that these two assemblies are related, it turns out that the assemblies on the right, the copies, the projected assemblies, change their ways, okay? and uh, they change their support and they become closer. Some of the neurons are shed and some of the, some of the neurons uh, migrate from one to the other, okay? And so you, as a result, you have a large intersection. And these are, things, these are all things that have been uh, uh, found both experimentally in, in subjects, but also, but also in, in, uh, by, by simulations and, 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 uh, and, uh, and theorems. Good. Uh, so, uh, as, I, as I, st I started by telling you that, uh, that computation in the brain, uh, it's a good thing to think of it as, you know, I believe that, uh, that one way that this could, could be happening is through assemblies. And, the, you know, this is the data structure, the assembly, and it has operations, the projection, pattern completion, association, what else, okay? And, uh, and now language comes in, okay? Because, uh, because linguists uh, start with Chomsky and actually, never ending, okay? So, you know, have been telling us that, uh, that uh, one uh, very important, very central sine qua non of language is something they call merge. And what is merge? Merge is essentially the creation of trees, is the creation from two leaves of an internal node of this tree. In other words, there is a creation of a new node, which uh, now, is intricately, is very closely connected with the, the other two. And uh, it turns out that this is another, uh, another operation that we can prove happens, okay? We can prove it by theorems again, by simulations, uh, that uh, indeed, if, you, if, the, if the two um, assemblies on the far left have created the two copies by projection in the middle, then, and then by, by firing again, and there is uh, there is strong uh, forward and backward connectivity uh, with the third with the fifth area. Then, by firing, they will create a new assembly will will be created in the fifth area, which has strong synaptic connectivity to and from the two assemblies in the middle. Okay, and that's tantamount to what uh, what uh, what uh, the linguists need. Uh, in order for uh, for a language to um, to to happen. Okay, uh, excellent. Uh, so uh, it turns out that uh, that proving that uh, sort of establishing that merge works in our simulations is uh, by far the hardest, uh, uh, both theorem and 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 uh, and uh, simulation, in the sense that it requires uh, more plasticity more synaptic connectivity, more dense synaptic connectivity than the other operations, okay? So uh, the question comes to our mind. Uh, if it exists in, in the human brain, uh, could it be that it needs enhanced hardware? Uh, and uh, it turns out that there is a mysterious uh, fiber on the left, on the left uh, uh, hemisphere, which is in humans, much larger in the left hemisphere than is on the right. Uh, and uh, this fiber uh, connects Wernicke's area with, with, uh, with Broca's area. In other words, connects the place where languages, with words in language reside 
and where the inner nodes of the tree are created, okay? And uh, I mean, the, the $60,000 question is, uh, is this, uh, is this, uh, uh, does this uh, 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 facilitate, uh, uh, create uh, merge, okay? Is this, is this the hardware that, uh, that, uh, that, that uh, 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 helps merge? Okay. Um, so, I presented you sort of, you know, this, uh, this uh, alleged data structure and these alleged operations. The question is, in what sense are they real, okay? It turns out that they correspond to behaviors of assemblies that have been observed in experiments or are strongly suggested by other experiments, as in MERGE. Uh, they can be, in, in some sense, okay, they, they constitute a high-level language, okay, which to our, uh, to our uh, credit, we did not call the assembly language, okay? But, but, uh, uh, but I mean, no, it's, they, they, they are like a computational language uh, in the sense that each one of these operations can be compi compiled down to the activity of neurons and synapses, uh, both mathematically and in simulations and in simulations of neurorealistic spike in, or, uh, spike in neurons, okay? So, so there is some evidence that these operations are indeed real. Uh, so what, uh, here are what they are, project, associate, pattern complete, merge, plus we have some uh, uh, control operations to make it into a real programming language, okay? So, you know, these, the first four, I can defend uh, uh, well. These are just, are just uh, technical, uh, technical necessities for what will follow. Uh, activate means that I have, a, I have, for every assembly, I have a secret way to fire it at any moment. Uh, read means that, uh, that I, by, by, I have a readout mechanism that from each area reads the name of the assembly that has fired in this area. And disinhibit means that I have a mechanism for disinhibiting, you know, the VIP neurons, or, for example, are, are such a mechanism in, in, in uh, several well-known uh, uh, circuits. Uh, so if I have all these, uh, the question is, this turns out that it gives you a complete uh, computational system, okay? It can perform arbitrary square root of n, square, square root of n space computations. And those of you who remember your complexity from, from, uh, from uh, 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 undergraduate computer science, you remember that square root of space computation is extremely powerful, okay? It basically says that uh, if n is a million, okay, it really tells you that any computation that can be performed in, uh, let's say, 100 parallel steps with 100, 100 registers can be done this way, okay? And this is a lot, okay? So, you know, it, 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 uh, it, uh, it, uh, I believe it's sufficient to explain uh, human cognition, okay? So, but, but, but uh, 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 this, is, this is a mathematical result. Okay. Um, Okay, let's go back to language, okay? Because this, this is, the, you know, the reason I introduced it and the reason I worked on it is because I believe that it was, something like that was needed in order to explain how language works. Uh, uh, so, uh, and let's take a very, uh, you, know, le you know, of course I would like to explain you how, how to you how, how assemblies can uh, elucidate the miracle that is happening right now, okay? You, uh, putting my, the words that you hear uh, uh, that I say uh, in order uh, and, uh, and, uh, and creating trees out of them that help you comprehend them and, 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 and hopefully uh, remember something out of them. Okay, so, uh, the, and, and, and uh, 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 the, the point is that, uh, that uh, you know, we are, we are, you know, I would, I would love to do that. I would love to tell you how the brain parses, okay? Uh, uh, and I'm working on it, okay? So I'll, I'll tell you a little more about it later. Uh, I'll tell you something much simpler, okay? Which I think I understand a bit better. And that's the following. How I can generate a sentence, okay? How I can think of a fact, okay? Uh, and this is, uh, is, is an interesting, I mean, you know, in other words, what is the most elementary operation of language, okay? Here's what it is, okay? So, you know, you know Wittgenstein is, uh, is, uh, is famous for, for having said that uh, the element of philosophy 
is not the being, as the Greeks said, but it's the fact, okay? Uh, so how can I put together a fact? What is a fact? A fact is that somebody or something does or is something, okay? So here is a fact, okay? A fact in the most, most primitive sense is an image, okay? An image, perhaps a mental image, because I may be lying to you or something that I see. Uh, and what I want to do is I want to put together out of this fact a sentence, okay? A well-formed sentence. How do I do that, okay? And uh, here is, here is how, I how I believe that, uh, that that's, I think, a, really, a reasonable explanation, okay? There, there are tons of things to be filled in, to tons of steps that you don't understand. But here is how it could be, okay? That the lexicon is a searchable data structure. So I see this and uh, I say what I'm looking now is, uh, is the act of hitting, no, of striking, no, of kicking, of kick, kick, okay? I, I, I find the verb kick in my lexicon and I project it. Uh, to the superior temporal gyrus, to Vernica's area, uh, so that uh, it's there available to create uh, to, as an element of the, as, 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 a, as an elementary part of this sentence. Uh, then, not then, all of these things are happening in, pa in parallel. Uh, who is doing that? That's the second most important question. And the answer is, uh, it's a kid, it's a boy, it's a girl, boy. Okay, so, so that's, uh, that I found boy. I, I also uh, projected to Vernica's area. Uh, and uh, what is it kicking? It's, he's kicking a ball. So now I have these things uh, that live in the verb, subject, and object sub areas of Wernicke's area. Then a merge happens, okay? I create a verb phrase out of kick and ball, okay? And finally, I create a sentence out of the whole three parts, okay? And the last two operations are merged. So, in three parallel operations, which means in uh, about, about, uh, about uh, not much more than a second, uh, I have already uh, produced this structure, okay? So, you know, if, uh, if you buy exactly what I told you, right? Uh, and, and, uh, and uh, uh, okay, now comes, all right. Now comes uh, the other part, the reverse part. Now I have to articulate it, okay? Frankly, uh, many linguists, and uh, I'm, I sort of believe them, uh, will tell you that articulation came later, okay? We have been able to construct such, such facts for a million years, but to articulate them probably for 80,000 years, okay? And, and, uh, but let's say that we are, we are modern humans, and, we, and I want to articulate this. How would I do it? So, S, the sentence uh, uh, node, the root of the tree, would fire. This would, uh, would, uh, mo mo would, mo would uh, mobilize uh, the rest of the tree, and eventually, the three leaves will fire. Well, in which order, okay? That's the, hundred, so that's, that's the important question. Well, it has to be, up to now, everything is order, uh, order is, not, is not important at all. But now that I have to articulate, I have to sequentialize, okay? So, so different languages have chosen different, uh, different uh, ways for this. And I'm going to, in fact, to talk about that a lot uh, in the remain, remainder of my talk. But uh, in English, it will be the boy kicked the ball, okay? Or the boy is kicking the ball or something like that, okay? So, uh, uh, and then this uh, through, through uh, the firing, uh, uh, the original, um, the original uh, uh, entries of the lexicon are going to be excited, and these are going to mobilize uh, uh, motor uh, programs for articulating uh, these uh, these words. Okay, so in uh, in uh, in a nutshell, this is sort of you know a a, a uh, cartoonish uh, uh, way of describing how. Uh, a very simple part of language, which is basically building the a simple syntactic scaffold of uh, of, uh, of of a sentence uh, that I want to articulate, could be carried out. Okay, uh, and that's you know what the good thing is that this is consistent with uh, things we know from various uh, for various uh, recent experiments and 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 uh, and, uh, um, uh, and understanding of how this process might be happening. Okay. Um, 
so for the production sort of you know the generation of the of the sentence as i told you uh, without articulation may be much more ancient than 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 than, uh, than uh, communication and uh, and uh, also uh, we have the merge pathways that uh, you know in other words through merge uh, structures are created these don't have to be just uh, just uh, sentences but can be whole paragraphs dialogues uh, could be stories could be plans okay and uh, so it makes sense that uh, that uh, that uh, this ability uh, predated uh, sort of actual uh, language as communication and uh, with mike collins uh, my colleague at columbia uh, uh, who is uh, uh, who has written some of the most uh, most famous parsers uh, in, in, uh, in nlp uh, we are trying to put together uh, a good parser for english uh, 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 based on you know in other words which could be uh, implemented uh, through assemblies what we know what what you conjecture about assemblies uh, in uh, the brain areas that uh, i mentioned before okay uh, so let me let me take one uh, dive you know take you through a quick dive into linguistics okay uh, as i told you uh, the production the generation of a sentence is of, of a fact okay the, you know how to how to uh, how to um, uh, document a fact in in my left brain uh, that the boy kicks the ball uh, is uh, order independent. Okay, so you know I, I don't I don't have to articulate it. I just create this fact. Uh, but then, if I want to say it, I will have to. I will, if I'm Japanese, I would say it completely different than than, than I'm saying it here. Uh, but or German. So it turns out that different languages have different subject, verb, object, SVO orders. Okay, uh, and uh, it turns out that uh, this is uh, these are the statistics sov is 45 percent svo is 42 percent these are soft statistics okay first of all most of language many languages like german and russian they are uh, they are very flexible okay they have no sv order but all of them they have a standard sv order and this is what this is what uh, what is counted here and also the question is what is a language so that it's an entry and so on so uh, it's it's uh, it's soft data but it's data. I got this from Wikipedia, and 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 uh, there are data elsewhere that are very compatible with this. Okay, so so this is this is uh, this is these are the statistics, and the question is why? Okay, and uh, the linguists have uh, come up with a lot of very clever explanations, ingenious explanations. Linguists, what linguists say is, you know, obviously, you know, I believe that uh, from linguistic principles, the any the order of, of articulation will have satisfy these uh, these axioms and uh, and uh, and uh, an sv order is uh, you know the more axioms it satisfies or the fewer it violates uh, the better it is you know the more likely it's going to be and it turns out that they work it, it works okay so it, it and the, it, it gives you a reasonable a reasonable uh, uh, accounting of this table uh, but the question is, does it make sense to also sort of, you know, now that we have a very, very uh, preliminary and conjecture uh, uh, idea of how, uh, how that, of how the uh, syntactic scaffold of a sentence is created, and can't we, can't we use this sort of, you know, can't you use sort of, you know, brain, brain operate, uh, brain uh, uh, facts as, uh, as, uh, brain uh, uh, considerations uh, as uh, as arguments for this okay so here is here is here is a here is a um, uh, so okay so uh, for example suppose that we are sov okay many many languages are many languages are sov okay so you know so uh, why what is what is uh, what is, you know um, uh, how would we implement it okay and basically what the one way to implement it is to fire the root in the next step s is going to be output and uh, the the other internal node is going to fire imagine that the firing of this internal node that's the blue arrow 
can inhibit the V. And then, then in the next step, O will fire. And this is going to disinhibit. That's a green arrow V. Okay. So basically, imagine that you have this, 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 uh, this inhibitory, disinhibitory mechanisms. And uh, that this is how, uh, notice that these cannot, you, you are not born with this. These are things that are created, installed uh, by the toddler, okay? So, you know, at 24, 25 months of uh, life, okay? Uh, and and uh, so these mechanisms, uh, this mechanism implements SOV. And basically you can already say, uh, it explains why SOV and SVO are much, much more, more, uh, uh, more uh, likely than others. And the reason is that they only need one inhibition and one disinhibition, whereas everything else, all, all you know, the other two order, the, the other orders require, the other four orders require uh, more than one inhibition and more than one, more than one disinhibition. Okay, uh, but uh, I mean, you, know, you can go one one step further. Uh, imagine that uh, the frequency of a particular order, that's the pi, is uh, sort of exponentially dependent on its complexity, okay? So, you know, where this is some kind of, of Bolzano uh, 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 distribution, okay? And, and the complexity is uh, the sum of control steps, okay? Of the, of the complexity of the, of the, of the of difficulty of the control steps. And uh, through gradient descent now, we can solve uh, the corresponding equations, okay? So, you know, as close as we can, uh, and uh, and uh, you find that what what the difficulty of each of each uh, uh, of each primitive the primitive are disinhibition and inhibition primitives okay between between nodes of this uh, five uh, node tree and uh, uh, by doing this you make a particular prediction that uh, uh, the two areas uh, for object and verb they are symmetrically connected whereas uh, there is much better connectivity from subject to verb than there is from verb to subject. Okay, so so you know in the infant brain before they learned language, uh, this uh, this uh, you know if this is you know this is a prediction that our that our that our this uh, this uh, calculation made. So I'm uh, I'm done. Uh, let me let me go through. Uh, uh, so. Uh, uh, you know the first, you know, the, of course, you know, the study of the brain is, uh, you know, uh, uh, I, sometimes I call the study of the brain uh, uh, the sort of, you know, the Berkeley sunsets from the Berkeley Hills, okay? In the following sense that when I see, when, when I was seeing this, uh, this uh, when I ever saw this, this uh, site, sunset from the Berkeley Hills, uh, I wonder why isn't everybody stopping what they're doing? And coming here to look at this, okay? When I work on this problem, okay, this is what I'm thinking. How interesting! My colleagues are working on other stuff. Okay, that, that's I don't get. It, okay, so uh, so the problem. The, so uh, the 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 new thing I brought you, okay, that's that's of course something that we all share. Is a, is a sort of you know a gut feeling we all share. The problem of language in the brain may be coming of age for some bold hypothesis, okay, and. Uh, I have uh, proposed one. Uh, how is parsing is done in the brain? Okay, notice that parsing is not only done but learned. Okay, because because every language has a different parsing algorithm, but this parsing algorithm might come from the same circuit. Okay, so that's that's a, that's a very 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 challenging problem. Uh, we are you know, uh, uh, my colleagues and I have some ideas that we are pushing. Uh, so. Are assemblies the seat of access logic? Okay, so you know, is uh, the concept of assemblies and the assembly calculus that I present to you uh, the answer to what to what Axel is seeking? And of course, how can one test it, verify it, falsify it, uh, the assembly hypothesis? Okay, so uh, these are my collaborators. Dan Mitropolsky is a graduate student at Columbia. Santos Vempala. Uh, uh, a colleague, a theoretician from uh, Georgia Tech, Mike Collins of uh, NLP from Columbia, and uh, Wolfgang Maas is, uh, is uh, in many ways my teacher in all this. Uh, he's, uh, he's a professor at TU Graz. 
Uh, so thank you very much. And uh, I hope I left some time for questions. Great, thank you very much for that wonderful talk. Uh, we definitely do have time. Uh, we've got a question here from Kwaja Wiesal. Uh, in your recent paper on assembly calculus, you approached the problem of computational modeling of brain by studying ensembles of neurons. According to you, at what level should we as computational neuroscientists approach the computational problem? Should it be at a level of single neurons or studying at the level of neural assemblies forming a hierarchy within the brain, i.e studying ensemble densities of these networks, which characterize the properties of ensemble densities higher up in the hierarchy, or do we need to build up from the single neurons to neural assemblies, then to specific parts of the brain, and then to the whole brain purely from a computational perspective? Okay, so um, uh, as a computer scientist, okay, the, you know, the, the, way, the way I'm thinking is this. That I mean, no, the answer is all of the above, okay, you know, but 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 in the following structured way, that an assembly is what a computer scientist will call an abstraction, okay. So you know, it is, um, it's not, you know, I don't think they're abstract. I think they 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 exist and live and 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 and, uh, and uh, torture me every night, but uh, but uh, but uh, uh, they're abstraction in the sense that you have to you have to show how they're implemented from the immediately lower level, which is neurons and synapses, okay? And this is something that is ongoing and, and, uh, and it's, uh, it has gone some way, okay? So, you know, we have some evidence that indeed uh, assemblies can be compiled down, you know, the assembly operations can be compiled down to, to, to the level of neurons and synapses. And of course, so, you know, assemblies are, uh, so, you know, they, 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 build, uh, they build hierarchies and, 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 uh, and uh, language is, of course, one, only one of, of the ways in which, assembly, you know, I believe that math computation, deduction, planning, okay, so, you know, all these things, uh, creativity, so, you know, all these things, they are, they are, must be implemented somehow and, 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 uh, and uh, okay, so, uh, I mean, you know, this is this, of course, uh, the, the question you 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 read to me is is a very sort of uh, uh, strikes at the core of what I'm trying to do. So, I mean, you know, there is another sort of question lurking. I mean, do you really believe that one that that we will some at some point uh, discover that the brain really is working in this uh, clean assembly way? Sort of, you know, that that you have assemblies, you can always name them, you can always point to them, and so on. So, the answer is. Alas, no. Um, uh, so you know, I I think all of us are resigned to the fact that uh, that no matter how clever our theory is, the brain is going to do something that is much more ad hoc, uh, messy, uh, wet, uh, uh, special purpose. Okay, uh, but uh, but the real question that I see it is uh, uh, is uh, is uh, our assemblies sort of you know a helpful way. Uh, uh, you know, can, can what is happening in the brain reasonably and in a helpful, in a productive way, abstracted by assemblies. Okay, so I hope, I hope I, I mean, a long answer, but I hope I hit the button in, 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 in what, what you asked. Thank you very much. Great, thank you. Uh, the next answer, or the next question we have here is from Anthony Chen. Um, you mentioned that the uh, arcuate facilius uh, is the hardware required to support the merge operation, which is the important operations to build trees. Does this imply that before information is processed by the arcuate facility, I'm probably saying that wrong, facility. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we do not have the ability to construct uh, ergo syntactic trees, i.e. Wernicke's area alone cannot construct sentences. Uh, do patients with lesions to uh, that brain region have the inability to understand sentences? Uh, so, uh, the patients with lesions in Broca's area, uh, they can, do not have syntax, okay? Sort of, you know, uh, uh, you know they say things like, uh, me, coffee cup, instead I want a cup of coffee, okay? So, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, patients with lesions in Wernicke's area, uh, they, for the life of them, they don't understand what the role of, of, of words are in the sentence, even though they create uh, perfect, syntactically perfect, but nonsensical sentences, okay? Uh, now, what happens in the, with, with uh, you know, that's, that's, that's an incredible mystery to me, okay? So, you know, that's, uh, I think it's one of the most fascinating things, right? I mean, you know, 
what happens if for two patients who have serious lesions in their quarter fasciculus, okay? Uh, uh, they, they can still do sentences. The sentences make sense. They understand, they decode sentences. So apparently there are other ways to do merge, okay? That the quarter fasciculus probably implements merge, but, but, uh, but, uh, but, uh, other, but uh, there are other mechanisms in the brain that implement merge. I mean, no, there are definitely other parallel links, parallel fibers that, uh, that, uh, that go also ventral, but also, but also dorsal, uh, uh, you know, smaller fibers that, that, that can do merge. Uh, uh, you know, very surprisingly, this is something that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that uh, I think requires explanation. Maybe, maybe, maybe the key to language is understanding this. Uh, patients with lesion to the arcuate fasciculus suffer what is known as conductance aphasia, which is, uh, which is uh, the following. Uh, you cannot repeat sentences you are told, okay? So, everybody, if I, can, if I cannot hear you, repeat after me. I do not have conductance, conductance aphasia. If you are successful, you are right, okay? You do not have conductance aphasia because that's what, that's, that's what conductance aphasia does not let you do. Uh, so, one has to think, then, I mean, of what is the real purpose of aquatic fasciculus? I mean, and if you think, you know, I can only speculate, so, you know, and it's, it's, uh, it's a long speculation, but, I mean, you know, uh, these trees must go somewhere and be stored, okay? So, you know, so maybe it is where, you know, the, 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 uh, the aquatic fasciculus is a bus, that, that, that takes trees away and, and puts them where they're going to be used in the future. But what do I know? Nothing, okay. Great, thank you. Uh, the next one is um, referring to earlier in your talk. Uh, they were asking if you wouldn't mind uh, repeating or clarifying the part about why 12 is particular. Okay, okay, sure, 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 yeah. So uh, there's a beautiful, uh, uh, a book by uh, Georgi Busaki, uh, which I recommend, the rhythms, of the, rhythms, the rhythms in the Brain, okay? Uh, uh, neuroscientists have thought about rhythms in the brain forever, okay? So, you know, the alpha rhythm was a huge thing, so, you know. So, uh, there are frequencies that, uh, that the brain uses for various purposes, okay? And we sort of understand them, okay? And uh, it turns out that two of these are particularly useful in my way of thinking. The theta rhythm is, uh, is uh, basically the rhythm of spike in neurons, okay? So, you know, it's, it's uh, maybe, maybe from uh, 30 hertz uh, to, 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 to uh, uh, sorry, to 30 milliseconds to, 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 to something like 100, 200 milliseconds, uh, 5 hertz to 30 hertz. Uh, 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 or, or, uh, or, or, you know, let's call it 50, 50 milliseconds or, or sort of, sort of like, 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 like uh, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the, um, uh, the theta rhythm is uh, something like four to six hertz. Uh, and it's, it's, the, it's the, uh, the rhythm of the language, okay? And if you divide the two, 50 divided by four, you get a, a dozen, okay? And this means that if, you know, this should be the, the inner, the, 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 the time constant of your compiler, okay? That uh, if you want to simulate one system with the other, uh, somehow you must do the elementary operations uh, of, uh, of, the, of the simulated system in about a dozen spikes, okay? So that's, and it turns out that dozen comes up a lot in our simulations, okay? That this is about the right number, the right number of, of iterations after which uh, the oper our operations converge, okay? That's, that's uh, I mean, I know that it could be just a numerical coincidence and probably is sort of, you know, but uh, it's, it's also worth mentioning. And the next question is from Dario. Uh, since you are convinced that trees are in our brains, do you agree with Noam Chomsky, uh, his universal grammar? Um, okay. Um, okay, so trees in our brains uh, goes way beyond Chomsky. Okay, so, you know, that's, that's um, uh, uh, you know, that some kind, you know, that, that, that syntax is, you know, that syntax, the understanding of the structure of a sentence is a huge part of a language. That's uncontroversial, okay? Uh, 
the question is, is it like a, 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 um, an abstract concept that sort of, you know, you deduce from, or is it an empirical observation that you measure and, and, and uh, so, so, I mean, you know, I believe that you don't have to be a Chomskyan to believe that something like merge uh, is needed in order to, not in order to study language, to publish a, a book about language, but in order to implement language uh, in an animal, okay? So, um, uh, so uh, universal grammar, okay? So that's, uh, 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 I don't believe that Chomsky believes in that sort of, you know, very strong uh, 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 hypothesis anymore, okay? So, you know, if, uh, if, you, look, uh, if you look at uh, the late Chomsky, so, you know, in, uh, since the 1995, you know, um, uh, first of all, grammar is not, so, you know, is not very pre prevalent in, sort of, you know, in, 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 in the work. And, uh, and the concept of merge, so, you know, the, the motto is all you need is merge, okay? So, you know, that, that uh, uh, merge is, uh, is important, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but uh, uh, you, know, you know, universal grammar is in some, you know, in some weaker sense is uncontroversial, okay? That basically, uh, uh, you know, so, so here, here, is, here is the modest version, okay? Uh, we all have a knowledge of language, okay? Uh, we all understand language. I mean, you know, you know everybody, so, you know, uh, you know, every every human, uh, without without sort of a very specific uh, uh, pathologies, uh, has, knows language, has a knowledge of language. Okay, for simplicity, let's call this knowledge of language grammar. Okay, uh, since languages are so different. Okay, so you know, there are thousands of languages across the globe. Uh, this knowledge of language that does not, cannot be specific, okay? But maybe there is a, a sort of a way of understanding language that abstracts all of them. And, you know, because uh, if, if a Japanese girl uh, is, uh, is, uh, is uh, raised from, uh, from infant in England, okay, will speak of an Oxford English with an Oxford accent and will not understand Japanese, okay? So, you know, there is evidence that there's something universal about it. Uh, and that uh, there must be sort of like, we must all have, be born in some kind of common abstraction of this knowledge, uh, ready to be, uh, to receive uh, some, uh, some uh, uh, modif mod modifiers that make us uh, speakers of Greek, English, and so on. Do, did I answer uh, this? Okay, so, so you know, uh, uh, I don't believe in 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 the, in the in the Chomsky in the sixties, but neither does Chomsky believe in Chomsky in the sixties. So, great, thanks. I think we have time for one more question. Uh, this is from Kwan Wan. Uh, do you have any advice on how cognitive neuroscientists using fMRI, EEG, and MEG techniques can design experiments to investigate these assembly operations? Good God. Okay. Uh, suffice it to say that 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 I have that. Uh, uh, at the beginning of, of the of the of the of the current pandemic, uh, I I received word from NSF that I that I had that they 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 gave me a grant uh, with uh, with uh, uh, cognitive neuroscientists uh, at at CUNY uh, to uh, do such experiments. So yes, so you know we are full of ideas of how to do this. Okay, so you know and uh, and many of them involve involve language. Okay, unfortunately. Uh, we cannot we cannot run our experiments right now. Okay, so but 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 yes yes of course you know that's that's something that uh, I'm very interested to you know I don't frankly so you know I said how do you verify or falsify the assembly hypothesis? Let me be perfectly frank. I think the uh, hypothesis for verify falsify is uh, is uh, sort of like. Uh, uh, I wouldn't call it a myth, but it's sort of you know some kind of abstraction, all right? I mean, you know, that that uh, this is what Popper uh, taught us, and it's basically correct, but not quite. Okay, so you know, I believe that that uh, that uh, hypotheses uh, are neither falsified nor verified. So you know, basically, they they are either pursued or abandoned. Okay, and and and. Uh, 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 what I want is the assembly hypothesis to be pursued. Okay, so you know, and and uh, and and if it's pursued, then what will happen? So you know, okay, one one extreme case is that 
it's nothing like that is happening in the brain, you were dreaming, fine, okay? Uh, but but uh, the most common thing will be that, uh, okay, so you, know, you have to, uh, you have to modify it very, you know, but, uh, you know, because experiments show that something different is happening, okay? And, and, and uh, you know, so pursuing is good, okay? So, you know, and it, and it, uh, and it, uh, uh, what is the death of a hypothesis is not falsification, but it's abandonment, okay? So, you know, that uh, uh, people say, ah, okay, uh, okay, uh, I'll do something else. Uh, we've got one from Maha Ale. Um, what the, what is the basis of choosing those values? Ergo, the plasticity of coefficient beta equals 0.1. How yeah. those selective values affect the assembly simulation results? Okay, okay. So, um, so we have uh, our simulation system is online, and you can play with it. Uh, and, and, the, and the paper contains a pointer to it. Uh, so, uh, roughly speaking, the more the, the bigger the plasticity coefficient, the more uh, the happier we are, so you know, the more true our results are. Okay, so you know, the point is, you know, you need, you need, if you make it, you know, the the uh, uh, and uh, 1.1 1 .1, uh, is uh, is uh, uh, sort of the threshold where uh, things start working. Okay, so you know, and uh, when we put it into two, uh, people who know about about the brain, about plasticity, scream at us. Okay, you know, so so. Um, uh, you know, if you know already, this plasticity rule is incredibly simple and 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 unrealistic. So you know, we know that plasticity is much more complicated than that. But uh, but uh, you know, it's just 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 an implementation of heavy plasticity. But uh, sort of to make it much stronger than 1.1 would be sort of would be extra uh, extra ground for uh, for doubting it, doubting the results. Thank you again for joining us, Christos. Wonderful talk. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure.